to scaling for success. All right, this is video number four in a five part series where we're talking about our reflections of what, what the biggest lessons have been over the last 12 to 18 months. Now, do you know what this is? This is a crocheted scarf. Actually, I should say it more appropriately. This is a scarf being crocheted. My daughter has decided that she well, first, she cracks me up. She goes, she goes, she's very artistic. She says she likes to paint and she likes to draw and she taught herself how to do balloon animals. And she comes home from school and half the time she comes home and she says, Mom, I just sold a painting for $2. Look, here's my toonie. Painting's gone. Uh, Mom, I gave everybody balloons on the bus. First ones, first ones free. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then it's 50 cents after that and I'm gonna make them into balloon animals for them and I got I got three orders and that's a dollar fifty and she gets very excited and so her her latest thing is that she really wants to crochet um, we have a member of the family an, an older generation who knows how to crochet so I've <laughs> taken her over so many times to learn how to crochet and she's actually got a pretty good knack for it so she's been crocheting these uh, stuffed animals which requires that you crochet a piece, an arm, a leg, or whatever, and then you put it on. She's great at the crocheting. She's learned how to do well. She can't put the things on. So now, hey, mom, can you help? Mom has no idea how to crochet. Mom is not somebody who's a seamstress. <laughs> so I'm working my butt off to try and figure out how to do this stuff. So this is my crochet scarf, which apparently she said she's going to steal when I'm done. <laughs> um, I wish her well. I'm not sure that as a first project it's worth stealing, but okay. I'm telling you this because as she continues to go through her journey, as she is choosing these various pieces, I mean, it was cracking me up as a mom. She's sitting out there for the summer, the very first week, she puts up a table at the bottom of the driveway and she's selling breezies and she's selling Pokemon cards. And then she starts to put out pictures and so she's got this whole setup. And so for a week, her first week, she, she actually made 50 bucks. That was cool. And then competition came into the market. Other kids on the street thought, oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> and so that was the end of my daughter doing her uh, her lemonade stand, as it were. <laughs> she was done. I don't want competition. They're, they're copying me, mom. <laughs> but she learned, she iterated, she continued to go on. She knew where her clients were. So she would pack up this little bag and she would go to the local park. So she changed things up. Now, why am I chuckling about all of this? I mean, obviously, as a mom, I think it's, and, and a mom who owns a business, I think it's hilarious. I think it's amazing. She's really learning and understanding. I've got two little jars down there for her, one for, one for her expenses, because mommy's not footing the bill, and the other one is for her income, so she can see in both cases, and she surely does. She takes her money, and she winds up, you know, she sells her little crocheted animals for something like five bucks, but that's got to do a whole roll of, of, uh, of yarn right so you can get a whole thing for for less than that and you make sure that your save your expenses and your sales are all all where they need to be and so it's great to watch her really learn and implement her learning and iterate the process so that's the focus for this particular theme so while i've watched her do it i know for my business we are about to go into iteration number four and so you know, first iteration was that solopreneur. The second iteration was bringing on a really small team because I just wanted to keep my number of clients as, to, as a handful. Um, and then happy clients were referring in other happy clients and I didn't want to turn them away. So then you have to grow a bigger team. But as each iteration happens, it's about making sure that you're also reviewing and keeping those dashboards and those numbers and your mind clear on what the outcome and the objective is. What does success mean for you? Does success mean that you're just having a little bit of fun? Does success mean that you're paying down some personal debt? Does success mean that you've 2 x your company or 10 x your company? Or what does success mean? And always going back to the dashboards and the KPIs. I was having a call this morning with a client and I had taken the time to take the outputs from their accounting. They're a smaller business and it was with an incubator that we work with. And so 
taking all of those financial numbers, putting them into a business model and showing them that last year you had, you know, 40 some odd thousand dollars in net profit and this year it looks like you're going to have two. Now, why is that? What happened? Well, how do we need to investigate and make sure, you know, you've got very specific goals, plans and objectives for the next year. How do we ensure that the model actually is going to meet the needs? And then asking the next question, which always comes in with annual planning, which is something that I highly recommend. You do not try and do everything from an annual plan in one day. Take the time to plan it out and separate out these pieces, right? So look at the business model, look at the implications, do some forecasting. But then the next time you gotta come back, you gotta check yourself and go, is that right? Are these pie in the sky outrageous numbers or are these actually targets that we're going to hit? Are we being more conservative to make sure that we can hit those targets? And then laying out the plan to make sure you make your numbers. That's something they do a lot in corporate and they don't do a lot. When I say corporate, I mean larger organizations over 100 people. Um, taking the time to really hone in on continually looking at those dashboards, holding people accountable for those numbers. How do you do that? Do you do that as kind of a willy nilly what if in your business? You know, this individual, be, and, and they're smaller, they, they're only in year number two. And so learn the lesson now, don't learn the lesson later. Okay, well, you didn't look at these all year. Great, now we're gonna look at them. We're 11 and a half months into the year when we do this. What's the number gonna look like? Oh, well, I was just tracking the top line number. Got it. And so what happens is that we get off track so fast and we don't even realize it. And how do we make sure that that doesn't happen? What is the, the bumper that we're putting in place so that we know that we're always, yes, there's, there's ups and there's downs, but there's always a way to get to where the target really sits. And so as we sit there and we iterate and you know, my daughter's gone off to school and she's taken her <laughs> multiple balls of yarn and she's sitting on the bus doing her crocheting, that's her next thing. Because ultimately the crocheting isn't the thing for her. She loves gaming. She loves Pokemon cards, but you need money in order to do those. Well, you don't have to have money to do the gaming, but mom's not always going to foot the bill and I'm not always going to want to provide that information. Hey, mom, it's only going to cost, you know, another 20 bucks to buy X number of V bucks in Fortnite. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> they have to learn how to stand on their own two feet. The businesses have to learn how to stand on their own two feet. And sometimes that means shifting and, and changing. Now, when you shift and change your business model, what does that also mean for the team? And don't forget to look at that and make sure that you're trying to always uh, keep them in mind. I'm not saying keep them around when they shouldn't be around. I'm saying that they are still people, human beings. They've been with you on this journey. So make sure that you're treating them with the respect that they do deserve and that you're setting them up for success as much as you possibly can, whether that's to stay or to go. All right, so I, uh, I guess tonight I should get back to my, my crocheting and my scarf because she really wants to steal it. But it was certainly a, a lesson in iteration for myself to learn that. So every time we're learning a new skill, always keep in mind that it's not one and done. When it's a baby and they're learning how to walk, they fall down. When it's a business, sometimes you're going to fall down. Know how to pick yourself back up. Know where to find that strategic advice and support for whatever it is that you need. Like this video if you found it helpful. And for more content just like this, subscribe to our channel or visit the Scaling Management Consultant Group website at scalinggrp.com or our new website at scalingresources.com.